Hello and welcome again to the Writer Review. This is Eric Kurat Writer, and this week we're going to be taking a look back at the 2006 drama titled Half Nelson. Now, Half Nelson runs for one hour and 46 minutes long. It is directed by Ryan Fleck. It is produced by Jimmy Patrickov, Alex Oslovsky, Lynette Howell, Anne Bowden, and Roseanne Korenberg. The script was written by Anne Bowden and Ryan Fleck. The score was done by a group known as the Broken Social Scene. The cinematography by Andridge Parquet. And it was edited by Anne Bowden. And the stars of the movie are Ryan Gosling, Sharika Epps, Anthony Mackie, uh, Monique Gabriela Kuman, Dennis O'Hare, Jeff Lima. Deborah Rush and J. O. Sanders. So one of the flaws we as the human race tend to do is judge others by how they look and how they act. I mean, no matter what you do or how you look, people will chastise you. Your nose is too big. You collect building blocks. from the box that you never take out. You have a habit of collecting chocolate pudding boxes and yet you never take it out of the package. You don't recycle your cans. You collect them because you think they'll be some form of a hobby. Your earlobes stick out like cauliflower. Your eyes are too small. Your arms are too long. Your feet are too small. Your teeth are too wide. Yeah. No matter what, people are going to chastise you. There's no question nor denying about that. As long as you're a part of the human race, people are going to point out your flaws. If we bump into things, we are dismissed as stupid. If you wear dark clothes all the time, we get dismissed as morbidly depressed. If we listen to rock music, we're dismissed as punks. Hip-hop, we're dismissed as hoodlums and rednecks if we like music like country, western, or bluegrass. We're boring if we like orchestra music or chamber stuff. We're dopeheads if we like psychedelic stuff. We're out of date if we listen to music from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, you know, stuff like that. The 90s. So no matter who we are, imperfection is not optional. We will get lambasted, lambasted by every critical flaw there is out there. Even how long your fingernails are. The only good people out there are those who fight for the good cause. Half Nelson is a redemptive story written by screenwriters Ryan Fleck and Anne Bodin. Fleck also directed the movie, and Anne Bodin was one of the producers, and she also edited the movie. That tells the story of Dan Dunn, played by Ryan Gosling, who's a high school teacher, but he is also at the same time a devout crackhead. But once he's in front of the classroom, he's a great teacher and the students truly look up to him, even if the administration thinks his behavior is a violation and would probably go to great lengths to have this guy fired, even though he is loved by many. Dan, in his ungodly state, struggles each morning to get out of bed and to get out the door, out of his place with his glazed blue eyes staring at the clouds. His physical appearance appears to be gaunt and disheveled and doesn't look like he can keep himself awake at night. But once he gets started in the classroom, he becomes his full self. 
He usually touches upon subject matters that deal a lot with civil rights, politics, maybe even and some historical. Maybe he teaches things like that. But the students look up to him, and they admire him. And then once the bell rings, or is in the, he's in the, he's usually often seen in the teacher's lounge, and he winds up doing his crack stuff. But you know the thing is, even though this guy is flawed, he does the movie succeeds to keep Dan Dunn as real as can be. Like the human race, Dan is a flawed individual. He's self-destructive, morally incompetent, and oblivious to his own actions. He's not violent. He's not rebellious by any means. He's just a person who's unaware of his own actions because he's so doped up and he's actually breaking the laws of ethics by coming to school in the condition that he's in. Now, does that make him comparable to the devil himself? Of course not. And his students find a lot of admiration for him and will stand by him no matter what. I mean, that's probably the main reason why he still has a job working at a school, even though under normal circumstances, he probably would have been fired right on the spot. There is one particular student who goes by the name of Dre, played by Sharika Epps. She's a loner type introverted student who discovers his passed out body in the restroom after a basketball game in which he was rejected. Uh, yes, after school, he usually coaches the girls' basketball team. So instead of reporting him to his superiors, Dre just offers him a wet paper towel to revive him a bit, and then they start to form a bond. Now, she's not asking for a lot in return, and he's showing his sense of gratitude for her not reporting or snitching a lot of students will, in a normal, under normal circumstances, a lot of students, if they see a teacher like this, more than likely they will snitch and will have this guy fired right on the spot. But no, her being non-judgmental, she just gives him a paper towel to revive himself in his act of gratitude. He drives her home, and she only just says, see you tomorrow, and she's on her way like it was no big deal. The day tomorrow's a new day, and everything that had just happened yesterday is forgotten. The feelings Dan and Dre have for each other is just as much as a teacher and student would feel after school when he was telling her right from wrong and she was making reference to her hand. This whole scene that took place in the car gives so much great meaning to the fundamentals that this movie is about. The exchange in dialogue, the admiration these two have for one another makes everything about this movie feel organic and the way teachers have with their students. The interaction between student and teacher is just so natural, so dynamic that it feels really, really real. Even though this is a work of a fiction, there's a lot of elements that have a lot of realism, and it keeps them both as human as possible. Ryan Gosling was only uh, 25 years old at the time, and he was showing just how dynamic he was as a performer, even going as to get nominated for an Oscar for Best Performance by an Actor in a Leading Role. Also, I have to say, Sharika Epps, did quite a acceptable job as the female lead for Gosling, as the student to whom Dan cares about the most. And she cares about him. And she's not going to report him, or she's not going to uh, spill the beans or be a goody two shoe snitch. No. She knows he, he's flawed, but she also has some flaws too. 
not her personally, but her family life seems to be far from anything that it could be deemed as perfect. Her mother seems to have two jobs, so she's hardly ever home. Her father is nowhere to be found. Her brother's in jail. Who does she? Who looks after her then? Some dopehead played by Anthony Mackie. But he's not a one-dimensional dopehead. He actually is very sympathetic. He never forces drugs anything on her or even acts like a thug. In fact, he probably may be the closest to a parental figure in her life since everybody else is either too preoccupied not around, or not around. The feelings that Dre and Dan have with each other remains and successfully stays mutual, and she knows Dan better than anyone else, whether it be student or staff. What makes this movie stand out very well is that the film is not the generically enhanced student-teacher related films that we've seen many, many times before. Uh, there's no underdog overcoming the odds in test scores or scoring the most points in a basketball court. No, none of that. This movie is closer to a case study film in which how an imperfect person who has personal drug issues get through his days while struggling with his demons, while at the same time how we can see the positive light through him. And then even though his doped up self is a violation of its own, we still don't want this guy fired because we love him so much, we care for him. And we don't really want to see him go. But we hope that we be pulled through one of these days. What makes this movie great is that even at the end, it's not really completely known if he's going to break the habit. But at least we know that there are people out there who do care for him. And that Dre will always be the loving, caring girl that Dan looks that looks up to him. She's not going to try to change him because, let's face it, he's an adult. He's a big boy. He'll know when it's time for him to change his ways. He doesn't need some of these precocious kids to tell him from right and wrong. He'll do it on his own. And it's good that they let him keep him as being a very independent-minded individual. While at the same time, we see a man who puts himself behind or care for others who need it most. This is a very selfless individual, this Dan. I mean, being to the fact that he looks, he, he pushes everybody else before him. He'll try to help out other people before him when, of course, really it's him who needs more help for himself than for others. But he always likes to put himself ahead. He always likes to put himself behind others to help them out as much as they can. Even though he's tr trying his best to kick out of a habit, it's a habit that just can't be fully broken, nor at least not right away. And it doesn't end with him being completely changed, taking a 180 or anything like that. Dan himself definitely is in a complex relationship with Dre. And that they are restricted limitations within the boundaries between a teacher and a student. For one thing, a student cannot be best friends with a teacher and vice versa. Yes, he could teach her all the stuff that he knows and all the stuff that's on the curriculum. But at the same time as a student, her relationship is also limited being the fact that she needs to get the good possible grades so that she can go ahead in life and learn some valuable lessons from the stuff that he's teaching. And that's basically what this whole student-teacher dynamic is and the way it should be. He can't be too personal with her, just like she can't be too personal with him. 
They can like each other, but they can't love each other. They could see each other every day at school, but then you also have to take the consideration that they have private lives of their own. And sometimes they can't always be together. For one thing, he's not entirely a positive role model, though he is far from being evil. He knows as a teacher he's getting paid to care for her and his students, so organically he can't be personal friends towards her, and she kind of understands that. And her her job is to try to pass his class. And that's supposed to be the main thing of how she could get on good terms with him. But Dre does not let these limitations detract her from admiring his character. And that's, and that's a, another positive trait there. And seeing him teach history and politics leaves you in a world where everything stems from personal and political views, and it leaves you with little connections between the two. The theory of think globally and act locally is what comes to mind here. Uh, the very provocative philosophy stems from one's head, even through a person dazed and confused like Dan Dunn. Uh, I definitely like this movie, and basically the meal ticket in this movie was the chemistry, the amazing chemistry between uh, Dan and Dre. Ryan Gosling and Sharika Epps truly, truly um, make this movie as humane and as real as possible, and they succeed in doing so. Uh, I, that's where I, why I highly recommend this movie. If I was to give a scale out of 10, I would definitely give Half Nelson an 8.5 out of 10. I highly recommend it. So I guess this ends my writer review. Thank you all for listening in. If you wish to subscribe to my channel, please feel free to do so. If you wish to leave a comment, go right ahead. But just remember the three simple rules. Be kind, be courteous, and please refrain from any rude comments. And I will be back again with another movie review. So until next time, this is Eric Red Writer saying, keep watching those movies, and I'll see you around. Goodbye.